Hi, this is Steve Harper from YourCreativeLife.com, talking today about fellowships and programs for writers. This is part two of my deep dive into what these programs are and how you apply, what they ask for, all of those sorts of good things. Now, um, I have changed my hat uh, in honor of this second part of this particular deep dive, in case you've noticed, uh, and even if you haven't, uh, and I have been talking about in part one, all about the fellowships and what they are and how I benefited from one of them, the one that's CBS Paramount one. And you can check out that video to find out all the details of that. But I wanna talk here a little bit about what these programs ask for and how you might handle that. Uh, and the handling of that is really gonna be the part that you'll need to sort of investigate and dig into and get some support either from somebody who has been through those programs or has uh, you know, applied for those programs before, or a coach, or uh, a writer, or you know, somebody who helps you with those things, because there is a lot to think about, and there are a lot of writing samples that these programs particularly ask for. So number one, the number one thing they ask for are writing samples. And what the writing sample is will depend on the program. Uh, back in the day when I applied for this program, and it may have changed, You'll have to look into it uh, for the Paramount program, but we needed an original script uh, and we also needed a spec. Now, nobody wants a spec anymore. Specs are kind of a thing that um, most programs don't ask for, although, you know, who knows, there might be a program out there that does. Uh, but essentially to give two writing samples is what they wanted. And so I had uh, submitted a play to them that I had worked on, and I also submitted um, a spec that I had done. Today, most of the programs and most of the people in the industry are really interested in original material. So they may ask you for two original pieces, maybe with some contrast, maybe one that's a comedy, maybe one that's a drama, maybe, you know, I'm not sure. But definitely make sure that your spec, your script, your, your original pieces are tight and well done because they're looking to see your voice. How does this person you know, create stuff on the page? Do they create a world well? And does the dialogue sound interesting? And am I compelled by the, the dramatic thrust of what's going on here? Does it move along well? Does it feel like something I would see on TV? Does it sound like something I would see on TV? All of those things come into play, and certainly uh, as well as um, you know all of the good stuff that we know about fundamentals, like you know make sure you have no typos, and you know are things spelled correctly, are they formatted correctly, does it look clean? All of that stuff is really part of what they're looking for when they want original material, but mostly for your voice and your writing. But all of this goes toward that. Uh, obviously, if you have a typo in there, that's not quite professional. So you want to do your best to both write things that are really interesting and then let other people see and read them. Uh, again, that might be a coach, that might be a friend, that might be another writer, somebody who can proofread and help you make sure that you have an error-free, uh, dramatically compelling script or two, depending on what they ask for. The other thing that they're gonna ask you for are a series of essays. And generally the essays go like this. They wanna know in an artistic statement, generally about what it is you write and why. And this is the space where some of my videos cover this when I talk about introducing yourself, you can take a look at those. The real thrust here is to take some real personal, energetic, powerful, relatable story from your life and talk about how that connects to the things that you create. Now, this is a bit of a formula, and maybe that's not exactly the way you want to do it. Maybe people who have gotten into the programs in the past haven't done that, but they're really looking for a personal connection between you as a human being and the stuff that's on the page. And that's so important because in the industry, when you're in a writer's room, when you get hired to be in a writer's room, uh, when you write a script, all of these things are informed by who you are as a person. So the natural question is, who are they as a person, right? And you don't want to shy away from giving that kind of information about yourself. Now, not that you want to sort of talk about things that are sort of unseemly. You don't want to necessarily jump out with, you know, how abused you've been or 
that kind of thing. But you do want to say things that make you unique. You know, so to say my dad is a dairy farmer and we grew up on a farm is a very interesting entree into why you write today. And maybe you write about things that are connected to farm life or things that are connected to animals. And, and without you making that bridge for the people reading these essays, they would never know. So that's one kind of essay, the sort of personal artistic statement. The other kind of essay is about what you think you'll get out of this particular program. And that too is a really great opportunity for you to spell out what your hopes are for the future. Do you wanna be a showrunner? Do you wanna bring particular kinds of stories to light for particular communities and kinds of people? Uh, are you you know, really hungry to see um, uh, female heroes or uh, native stories or stories about people of color or whatever it is. So you can use that, which might come up in the, the other piece about you know what you bring to the world, but you can use that to say that you hope from the program, perhaps, that you build a foundation so that you know how to step into a writer's room, eventually be a showrunner, eventually be a producer, however you can connect the things that the program offers to your own future goals and your own present circumstance is really what they're looking for. So it's about clarity of vision, focus, and almost a business plan for the kind of thing that you'll get out of the program or that you hope to get out of the program in the long run. And you can find out, you know, I would say for any program you apply to, one of the things to do is to research the program. Who are the writers who have come out of, out of the program? Do you know any of them? What have they gone on to do? What does that give you an example of in terms of what the program seems to be good at? All of those things you can funnel into these essays and, uh, and you know, talk about what it is that you are most interested in, in terms of stepping into these programs, offering yourself up to learn and grow, and what do you bring to the table in terms of your past and the kind of writing you do and the kind of writing you want to do in the future. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them below uh, in the comment section. Also, make sure that you have subscribed, give this a thumbs up, and subscribe because I come out with these videos every single week. This week, I'm actually dropping these two as a bonus, but uh, you get to see over 100 videos on this site about everything soup to nuts with all sorts of things about surviving and thriving in the TV writing, screenwriting, Hollywood writer life industry. Check out yourcreativelife.com where you can find out more about how I can help you with your particular goals. You can also sign up for my free newsletter that comes out every month. And there's a link there to the Secret Writer Podcast, which is our fast growing podcast, which is being listened to all over the world about the inner life of writers. And uh, we've been having guests and having a lot of fun on it and please check that out. So thanks for joining me here. I will see you next time.